Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom, and there's a slight breeze. Yeah, so I got my Lily Tomlin mic covered here. I can't even see it on the screen. Where is it? Is it here? Oh, is it there? I don't know. Okay, so it's Saturday morning here. Oh, no, it's kind of breezy. Let's walk this way. Yeah, let's try this, okay? Sidestep. Oh, that's that country song, right? There. Is that a little better? I don't know. All right. Okay, so we're ready for the parade. But we have a problem. It's raining. Yes, a drizzly rain. It was raining hard before I come out here. So I don't know. Okay, this morning, September 8th, 2023. It's not July. We're getting September weather. We had two hot days. Well, at least I'm not up here at a fishing lodge, sitting in a boat, freezing my freaking ass off. No wonder people don't come to lodges anymore. They go on cruise ships where there's lots of booze and women and fun times, right? Why would you come up here and sit in a boat and freeze to death and have the mosquitoes eat you alive? Okay, September 8th, Saturday. It's plus 13 Celsius. Yes, the month of July is brought to you by the number 13th. We had warmer temperatures in April. Yes, when the snow was on the ground and the sun was shining and it wasn't this freaking windy. Yes, I don't know how many, what, two years we've been standing out here holding a stick and I'm having to cover the Lily Tomlin mic with my jammy bottoms or whatever, trying to control the wind. It's unreal. Okay, but it feels like plus 11 Celsius. Yes, chilly willy. And on the yo-yo scale, our favorite number, 55. Yes, but feels like 52. Two good numbers, yes. Also, too, I live in fear. Look it. I took the cover from my Lincoln gas-powered welder and covered the promo bike up last night so it didn't get rained on. Now I live in fear of them stealing it. Yes, yeah, stealing it because a welder, you know, they think it's a welder so they'll steal it knowing there's copper in it and the motor and the gasoline and they can sell it because people will buy it, right? Whereas it was the $42,000 promo bike in the back of Sir Rodney's truck last year in Winnipeg for three days, nobody stole it. Yes, isn't that unreal? The thieves of Winnipeg have moral, more morals and scruples than the guy that built the bike. Like, why would you build something that didn't run, have no VIN numbers, and you bolted a bunch of rusted, junky parts on it? Yeah. So there's a slight problem there. So like I say, the thieves of Winnipeg have more morals. Yes, but we're going to market this uh, promo bike. Yeah, because I bought it, paid 42000 cash or whatever. That's what it cost to land it here. All right. So it was supposed to go to Georgia to market my Naughty Natalie book series. So the actors for Naughty Natalie would sit on the bike and they'd go to functions and have a good time. So... The guy was told to build a bike, build it right, because it's your name on it, your company, your business, and it's marketing you too. So I try and give a guy a break, and what does he do? He screws me. Yeah, so he just bolted a bunch of junk together, put lots of bondo on, and called it good. Yeah, so that's the new world we live in. Screw everybody. They don't care about... How would you say, repeat business or anything? They don't care. Just take the money and run. I don't know. I think the guy's on drugs. But we're going to be marketing the promo bike as a cube. That's what I bought it for. So too bad, so sad, the builder. You're going to become famous. Home of the cube. Yes, on freaking real. But he can buy it back for 55000 because I've made it famous now as the cube. But if I market it correctly with the squishing of the cube and everything like that, we could have had million, two million views on the videos on YouTube and TikTok and everything like that. But we're not that way. We'll just let it sit there, slide along, and let it climb. Yes. It's like that lady in the crowd that is, how would you say, how would you say, does not, it's very discreet on the way she does things. You know, like a librarian would be the best example. But once in the bedroom, oh, she turns naughty, right? So we're just going to sit back, relax, and smile. Oh, yes. And that Adam Ant song from the 80s, Goody Goody Two Shoes, that lady was hot in that video. And yet she didn't show anything. It was all in her eyes, her actions, and her movements. That's why the video was so hot. 
And the way he had it, man, dressed back then, whoa, man, the 80s were good. I'm not sure about that. But that song reminds me of The Sister. Yes, goody, goody two shoes. Oh, my, I better get off this rant. We're not sure what we're going to do today because, like, it's raining. Like, what are we going to do? We line up for a parade and it rains. It's not normal everywhere else, but oh, well. We'll just find something to do today. The staff is grocery shopping. Oh, hopefully Johnny brought the groceries yesterday or she'd be buying nothing on the shelves. All right. But it's good to see we got the promo bike covered and the flag of exercises tied up for his own good. Yes. Well, I couldn't have him self-destruct like me last night enjoying the beverage. Because we worked hard and we quit early. So when we quit early, guess what? We kind of beverage yeah i should have washed the dishes i should have vacuumed the house i should have cleaned the bathroom oh but the beer tasted so good but i worked hard we got three trucks up and going or finished the final assembly for the parade so that's three yes and it didn't cost us really anything because we had everything in stock okay let's do the famous scroll sideways to see the icky weather look at that oh Unreal. At least there's not a 200 mile an hour wind. That's all we're getting here to blow that smoke down to the Americans. Yes, I hopefully they sue Canada for not putting out fires or starting the fires. You know, absolutely stupid. Oh, yes. And we watched a 41 Chevy there so we can find out where the oil leaks are coming from on that junkyard motor. Yes, that's a good motor. Never give up. Never judge a book by its cover. Yes. Also, too, the Naughty Natalie book series. We're locked down. We can't go anywhere. I can't go uptown, have a local lady po pose for the pictures in the book or anything like that. So I had to use pictures or take pictures of pictures from the 80s, you know, 35-year-old, you know, pictures. That's how the covers on those books became because we were locked down and we couldn't do anything. So we couldn't get fancy covers made or actresses or whatever to pose for the book covers yeah so we're gonna leave it like that because the book is the words in the pages you know just like playboy you don't buy the playboy for the cover you buy the playboy for the stories and the information inside yeah and the pictures too so those covers will stay the same all the covers on my books are here, my pictures, my stuff, you know, and Amazon likes that because it fits into their printing mold or mold or pattern or format for printing the books. So my books are Amazon books, they're printer friendly, everything like that, and that's what we like. We don't get exotic, you know, with different stuff. The black covered books cost a lot of money to print, they were high end covers and everything like that. What for? You know, what for? So we went to the lower end, dropped the price, you know, big time through Amazon. Now the books are around the world. They're easy to ship and stuff like that. So you got to work smarter, not harder. That's what I learned. So do it the way everybody else is doing or do it the easiest way So you know, for people to mail books. Right now in Canada, we can't mail anything out of here. It's too expensive. You know, it's just unreal how pricey the post office is getting so we don't mail any oops i got the burbs i oh i opened a fresh jar of peanut butter today so maybe it's got the extra flavor so i got the burbs all right let's scroll some more here enjoy the weather look at that and i don't hear dick anywhere maybe he can't fly when there's a cloud in the sky all right so there we go with the promo bike and i'll add that link again to the bike getting cubed you know that should be 2 million, 3 million views easily. Sir Rodney did an excellent job, you know, organizing or orchestrating the cubing of the bike. Because that was the best thing we had to do. The builder destroyed the bike. We couldn't sell it. We couldn't sell parts of it because it was junk. So, and I'm not spending another $10,000 to get VIN numbers and get the bike up and running and pass the Manitoba safety so I can ship it to Georgia. Just cube it, get it done with, end it like a bad marriage you know so now it's a cube disguised as a lincoln wilder hopefully they don't steal it all right i better go here comes the boss
Okay, it's a rain day here in the kingdom, so I think the staff's going fishing. But also, too, we forgot to mention that the build was so bad on this bike that the local thieves of Winnipeg wouldn't steal it. Yes, that's how bad it was. It didn't run, didn't drive, didn't do anything for Sir Rodney, and no VIN numbers, no paperwork, so basically we had to cube it. So we'll include Sir Rodney's video of it becoming the cube or the $42,000 coffee table. This is the original footage that he took when he got it cubed. And we credit the guy running the baler. He knew what he was doing like I did when I cubed a bike back in the day. All right, y'all, insert the video here. All right, so here's the thing. I know absolutely nothing about building a motorcycle. The only thing I know is I like to ride them. So when Joey Barnes from the King of Obsolete paid $40,000, and I'm not going to mention any names or companies, to have this bike built, and I go pick it up. We're calling this bike the three dressed up as the nine because that's basically what it is. Looks good from far, but take a closer look. Look at those rusty bolts. That is unacceptable. Okay, you come around this side. Okay, look at this starter. That starter was found on another bike in the back 40 somewhere off of a used hunk of crap and he is not happy so he has asked me to make a couple of changes for him and if you're interested stay tuned for part two or you can go to kingofobsolete.ca check out his website he's on TikTok, he's on facebook he's on uh, youtube so yeah not a bad looking bike, but I'm going to make a couple of changes in about half an hour. Stay tuned for part two. Okay, part two of the $40,000 bike that Joey Barnes from the King of Obsolete wanted me to do a modification on, and that's the kingofobsolete.ca. You can go check this out on his website. I'm sure it'll be on there later. And I consider myself to be a good employee when the boss of my part-time job says to modify the motorcycle that he paid $40,000 for. I took it upon myself. The only thing I can think of I needed to put a coffee holder on it because I love my Tim Hortons coffee. So I think that's just perfect. Look at how nicely it holds that coffee. Oh, look, there's the nice carburetor. That should ought to do it. That is a perfectly modified coffee holder complete with a headlight so you can see your coffee while you're drinking it at night all right i gotta go to my full-time job now saturday morning here in the kingdom and just got back from shopping in whoville for two bags and three water jugs that's 170 dollars that is bull crap well i better head back home before this storm comes Saturday morning here in Whoville, after I was done shopping, I went and got a fishing license. Just going to flash it up there real quick, but that took me over an hour to get. So for you guys that want to come up here and go fishing thinking it's easy to get a license, you are wrong. The prices also went up just so I can catch four fish. That's it. Little windy, so I'll try and talk as loud as possible. Got my hat kind of covering the, the phone here, but this is the track bridge. Same place we came last time with the GoPro and all that fun stuff. But this time I have my fishing license. So we're going to walk down there on the side and we're going to try and go and do some fishing. This is just one of the many spots that I'm going to try and fish at today. The next one we're going to is actually at the very end of this. It's like down there somewhere. We'll take you with us and show you how it is. I don't know if you can hear me here, but I'll talk as loud as possible. 
we came in from that side of the train tracks last time but that's so bumpy with all this stuff that i have i did not want to go through that so i came from this side over here sorry about the wind but i came from down there over there is the highway that goes out to Eldon Lake and then goes back into Whoville. So when we get back over there, I'll show you what it looks like with no tracks. Here we have the crossing of the tracks. That's where I came out of. And if you keep going back that way, you can get to the kingdom and so on from there. As you can see, these are all gone and ripped up. Let's look this way. There's the highway and that goes out to Eldon Lake and then that takes you back into Whoville. That's where I came from. If you continue this way, these tracks take you south. Had no luck at the track bridge, so I popped down to my old stomping grounds. This is Dinky Bridge and it comes in from Lynn River, etc. and all the other lakes together. And this is very clean water that passes through everything else. So let's see if we can catch something here. I grew up fishing here. We'd always come here across the mine site and back down in here. As you can tell, everyone fishes here. And of course they have to leave their garbage. So another 20 years from now, my dad and I will be picking up this stuff too. <laughs> Just in time, the sun's popping out as I'm getting everything set up to go fishing. This is gonna be good. Up here, we have to debarb our hooks. The one that's on my line, you can clearly tell has been squished down compared to the other one that's in my hand there. If we don't do this, we will get in trouble. Plus, it's harder to get it out of the fish's mouth and all that, but it's mostly because we don't want to get fined. This is underneath Dinky Bridge here. We're going to give you a better look. Hang on. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. After lunch here in Whoville, well, more like behind Whoville, but I got skunked here too, so I guess we'll head back and have some lunch and see what the day brings. I was hoping to catch some walleye for you guys so you could see the difference between our northern walleye and the stuff that's in the south. They are completely different colors, and eat, like any fish up here looks completely different than a fish in the south, and I would love to show you guys this. Made it back to Whoville, no problems at all. Got skunked, but we knew that was going to happen. I guess I'm stuck having mushy KD for supper tonight. Oh well, there's always tomorrow. Now it's time to let the dogs out, have a shower, and crack a nice cold beer. That's the end of my day.